an Egyptian uh, French campaign to promote tourism, to talk about Egypt, to invite people to see the wonders uh, happening here and the many types of uh, tourism uh, that or uh, destinations that you could visit over here. We're going to talk about all that in detail with our uh, dear guest live over the phone, uh, Mr. Dr. Yahya Abdel Eder, the tourism expert. Good morning, Dr. Abdel Eder. Good morning, sir. Hello? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes. How are you doing, sir? Uh, uh, tell us more about that campaign and what exactly uh, is it aiming at? Well, really, the uh, Ministry of Tourism is having this solid strategy, you know, like to promote uh, travel to Egypt uh, worldwide. And uh, France is one of the leading uh, destinations that generates uh, and travel market to Egypt a long time ago. Mm. As uh, we know, uh, France has historical, strong historical ties with Egypt since uh, the French expedition in 1798. And uh, this is where the Rosetta Stone was discovered and uh, deciphered by Chapoulion. So since uh, the time, we have, you know, like strong historical ties, exchange of culture, heritage, uh, developing, you know, like the uh, Cairo Museum, like over uh, 120 years ago. So uh, that's why the Ministry of Tourism and the French, they love to uh, visit Egypt annually because of its cultural value. So the campaign is targeting French visitors that at one point they reach it half a million visitors per year. So that is the, like, really the essence of uh, the campaign between Egypt and France. Right. Uh, how exactly is it planned to take place? Is it going to be launched uh, through winter season? Is it going to be uh, di divided into different seasons? I mean, how exactly is it going to take place? Well, actually, it's uh, been undertaken now uh, for this time of the year, and uh, it's joint uh, promotion, you know, like uh, with Havas, which is like uh, a top leading tour operator in France that has been promoting travel to Egypt for, uh, for decades now. So the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism uh, is jointly you know, like developing this campaign to promote travel in, in France, where there are like 60 million French, you know, like a large number of them, they love to come to Egypt. And at the same time, they are conducting uh, workshops, you know, like the travel agents, for tour operators, for uh, most of the stakeholders in the travel industry, so they become familiar with the update because uh, for the last seven years we've been opening new museums, we have new projects, airports, development, resorts. So they need to be updated to sell these products and travel services to Egypt. Uh, usually uh, uh, the French tourism or French people are concerned with uh, cultural tourism, with visiting museums and uh, visiting uh, probably uh, art exhibitions and uh, um, carnivals and uh, cinematography and everything. And also at the same time, they like these safaris uh, to learn more about it. So uh, is that going to fo focus more on those spheres or everything? Yes, really, you are quite right because the, uh, you know, like French travelers and visitors to Egypt, you know, like the our uh, culture, heritage, uh, archaeology, uh, mm -hmm. art, you know, like uh, oriented and they like uh, as well, you know, like because you have a diversity in attractions, we have the ecotourism, we have the religious tourism, the safaris. So they like to do this and they mostly arrive to Egypt between September to May every year. It's like nearly uh, spring, uh, winter, you know, and the beginning of the summer. So they like to come through this out uh, this time of the year and they love to do Cairo and tour, you know, like it's Fatimiya and Khedivi headquarters and then fly to Luxor and go to Aswan Abu uh, But a uh, large portion of them, they like to do this through Nile cruises up the Nile. So this is just like a profile of French visitors to Egypt on, on an annual basis. So this uh, French-Egyptian campaign is, uh, is aiming or is addressing a French culture or it is a partnership an industry, an industry, it is sort of an industrial campaign to promote tourism from a French view to attract tourists from all over the world. What exactly is it? Well, it's mainly targeting the um, uh, francophone, you know, like market, which is like uh, Switzerland, 
France, Strasbourg, Belgium, you know, like the Francophone region, mm. because this is the uh, um, area, you know, like where the uh, uh, Paris office of the Egyptian Tourist Authority, you know, like covers it's the regional office. So it's targeting this market, and they have leading and uh, basic campaigns and uh, travel exhibitions that have been done for like half a century now, like the Salon de Voyage and the Top Rizal. So all the Francophone, they go to uh, these exhibitions and they check the updates on the uh, travel attractions and destination. As I said, you know, like uh, Neil, inshallah, will be opening the Gdan Egyptian Museum. And uh, prior to that, we opened the Fustat Museum for Civilization, the Haikada, Sham Sheikh. And currently, the uh, UNESCO and the, the European uh, you know, like Union, the upgrading the status of the Tahrir Square Museum with the help of the, the Louvre Museum as well. So there is a strong connection between Egypt and France. And uh, this uh, campaign, you know, like will reap its fruits uh, as we're seeing uh, having a strong uh, season of international travel arrivals from France currently. Talk to us about the training courses that uh, should be given to the French travel agencies coming over to Egypt. Well, mostly it, it's called like, uh, like, like fan trips, you know, like because uh, the tourist destinations currently, you know, like there is like uh, more projects and facilities and developments, you know, like in the market. Uh, that's why for the past three years we had, you know, like many projects. We added like about five museums at least, you know, like the uh, Gada, Sham Sheikh, Museum of Civilization uh, at the start. And uh, shortly we'll be opening, inshallah, the Grand Egyptian Museum. We have new airports, Sphinx Airport, and we have uh, exhibitions. We have, um, you know, like uh, sport events uh, as well. So all these events, you know, like they have to be updated for the uh, travel agents, for the tour operators, for the airlines for the cruise line, uh, uh, all uh, the food and beverage uh, operations uh, as well. So all this has been, you know, like to be inducted to uh, the current, you know, like uh, working force in, in, in France and other destinations as well. So they know the capacity and the type of attraction, its seasonality and its rate and rank and prices, cost, all of these factors they have to do with and know before they start uh, selling the two packages to the consumers at a large market. Right. Uh, you talked about the, of course, the number of museums uh, that were inaugurated uh, uh, during the, the, the pace of uh, the past three or four years and until this very day. At each uh, uh, international and each airport in Egypt, there is a, a little museum that is exhibiting some uh, very precious artifacts uh, for Egyptian history. So. How is that going to be uh, having its uh, role, impressive role, in any tourist campaign? Well, really, you are quite right, because uh, last year, we had the, two years ago, we had the King Tut exhibition in Paris, and it was like the most attractive exhibition that took place in Paris. It made uh, excellent revenues for Egypt, you know, like, in, in dollar value, and as well, they were, like, lining up to visit and I was talking to Ms. Doan Aguib, a leading uh, uh, travel agent, uh, tour guide. She told me that uh, the whole exhibition was just like 150 artifacts of the King Tut collection. So imagine when we like uh, shortly open the Grand Egyptian Museum and we have over 5,000 artifacts under our group. So uh, just uh, this is one aspect. And uh, you're quite right because we opened uh, another museum at the administrative capital. Uh, we have at the Cairo airport, you know, like a small museum for visitors on uh, arrival and departure. So, and then we have the Sphinx uh, airport uh, near the Giza plateau. It's in operation now mm. with German airlines and international airlines directly flying, you know, like from uh, uh, capital uh, destinations in, in Europe directly to Sphinx. So visitors will be going to the Saqqara, Necropolis, to the Giza plateau and uh, visit the Grand Egyptian Museum when it opens soon, inshallah. Right. Of course, uh, we are awaiting the inauguration of the Grand Egyptian Museum, which is going to be the uh, event of the era. And, of course, this particular museum is going to change the map uh, of history, the map of tourism, and the map of uh, uh, Egypt as 
uh, one of the top destinations to be visited and a cultural destination at the same time. Talk to us about the importance of uh, this particular museum uh, in the Middle East and in the Arab region and in Africa and how is it going to be uh, a center of attraction especially for European tourism? Well, uh, really, you know, like uh, this is like an icon, you know, like uh, for the century because it took uh, some time, you know, like to uh, to create the concept and develop and uh, shortly, inshallah, we're going to do the opening and then the operation and then the promotion. So it's a great, uh, uh, you know, like uh, project for culture and it's not only Egypt, for Egypt as well because Egypt is the cradle of civilization and it carries everything from prehistoric up to, you know, like uh, uh, the, the Greco-Roman times, you know, like the collection is great, you know, like uh, we have uh, for the first time, as I mentioned, collected the whole uh, artifacts of King Tut under the roof. We have at the entrance, you know, there's a great uh, plateau of uh, 17 of the greatest pharaohs, you know, like uh, Hatshepsut and Ahmos and, mm. and King Tut and Ramesses. We have their own cartouche, you know, uh, printed for the first time. And it's covered in, in, uh, in, in black uh, uh, granite, you know, like, and, uh, and it's covered, you know, like, um, coated with, with gold. So, and, and this is, of course, visitors will come and visit the uh, obelisk of uh, Ramesses II that was transferred from Tanis, from Shakya, uh, uh, outside the museum. And at the entrance, there's a gigantic statue of Ramesses II who ruled in the 19th dynasty. Uh, and he was in the New Kingdom for 67 years. So all these aspects, apart from the facilities of the museum, you know, like children's museum, uh, auditoriums, facilities, training, restoration, it's a huge uh, project that you need at least a minimum of three days to tour part of its facilities. That's why it's going to be it's, it's a great attraction. And lots of writers and uh, storytellers worldwide and media they like to come and write to their audiences and they contact me and they contact the uh, World Media Ministry of Tourism as well. So it, it's a, you know, like a romantic project uh, that's going to create uh, more demand and is going to increase the inflows of international travel to Egypt because uh, visitors now they have to stay more, two or three nights more to spend enough time to tour its facilities and check out its attractions. Right. Uh, 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 actually, uh, talking also about uh, the seasons, we are awaiting uh, the month, of, the holy month of Ramadan, and of course, this is in its own right is going to be uh, one of the most attractive uh, times uh, of the year uh, when, for anybody to visit Egypt. How is that going to be uh, taken by a European? Uh, um, I mean, tourists who are thinking to visit Egypt. Do they really prefer to spend uh, time in uh, uh, Egypt at Ramadan? Well, really, I'm going to tell you this directly because I work as a tourist counselor in New York and California, and I visited England and Europe as well. And I was asked by, you know, like travelers and visitors, mm -hmm. they like to come to Egypt, and they say, you know, Egypt is nearly like shut down, you know, like Ramadan. I told them to the contrary, this is the best time of the year to visit because, you know, like there is more accessibility, you can do more, do more tours, you know, like during the day, you know, I mean, like uh, downtown looks, you know, like quieter, you know, like compared mm. to the rest of the year. Mm. And in the evening, it is so lively. And remember, uh, some time ago, we used to have, you know, like the uh, public banquet, you know, like a meal served, and many of them, they would like, you know, like during the time, iftar time, join the Egyptians and have the uh, iftar meal, and they enjoyed it so much, and then you go to Khan Khalili, you know, like, and the Fatimid Cairo, and they enjoy the, the evenings, you know, like with uh, the sounds, you know, like of chants and prayers, and, you know, like drink the tea and coffee, and uh, it was so lively. So it's an attractive month for, uh, for foreign visitors. And for uh, our brothers in the Gulf and Arab world as well, they like to come and spend one week or ten days, you know, like Ramadan, because the way we conduct it and celebrate it, it's so lively and colorful in Egypt uh, as as well. Right, Mr. Yahya Abdel Adir, the tourism expert, would like to thank you so much, and you have a beautiful day. And we're going to go to a short break, and we're going to continue the breakfast show. So stay with us.